Right, Tim, take it away. Hello, um, this is the library's presentation on computer basics. As always, if Mary has your email, she will send you a link to the slides and also a link to the recording of this presentation. One of the nice things about the slides is that you don't really have to write anything down. Uh, you can refer back to the slides afterwards in order to jog your memory. The other nice thing is the next time we do this class, these slides will be updated. So the information will be, you know, current and relevant for, you know, the next time you would want to, uh, to check them out. Um, also, if you have any questions during this, um, you can either use the Zoom raise your hand feature, or you can type it into the Zoom chat, or at, you know, various points, we will stop and ask if anyone has questions. If you have any questions after the presentation, which is generally when I remember that I have a question whenever I'm listening to a presentation, you can always email Mary um, or you can either drop by the library uh, in person or via Zoom Wednesday starting at noon, uh, where you can talk with me kind of one-on-one -on -one about any specific issue um, or question you may have. All right, so computer basics, Windows. Uh, the first thing is generally, you know, what is a computer? And a computer is generally referred to as the, um, the housing that contains the motherboard, which has the CPU, the RAM, the hard drive, all of that stuff attached to it. So it's kind of the physical box. Um, one thing to remember whenever you, if you have like an issue with a computer and you need to take it somewhere to get repaired, uh, bring the box, not the monitor. Um, occasionally people have brought me the monitor because that's the device that they use to look at the computer, but that's not the actual computer. Uh, also, uh, we'll go over in a little bit, but you know, if you should repair your computer, if you have a problem with it. Uh, also, uh, with your computer will be external hardware. Uh, these are generally referred to as peripherals. So these would be things like mouse, keyboard, uh, the monitor, um, your audio device, so your speakers, that sort of thing. Uh, one uh, thing I would like to point out, uh, and this is purely anecdotal, but I was on a fast track to having carpal tunnel, which is essentially wrist pain. Um, and one thing that helped me a lot is a mouse, like you can see in the upper right hand corner, that's a trackball. What it basically allows, it's super old technology, right? Um, but one, one of the things the trackball allows me to do is use the computer without moving my wrist, which for me, um, I feel anecdotally has made a difference and has made it easier for me to use the computer. Um, one of the things that is important to know is what version of Windows do you have? And the reason why this is important is older, at a certain point in time, older versions of Windows will no longer get security updates. And if your computer is no longer getting security updates, you should probably buy a new computer. Um, it's, you can think of it as like a plan of, of uh, you know, planned obsolescence that the company wants more money kind of thing. Um, but also it's somewhat unrealistic to for all these computer manufacturers to support their aging hardware after 10 years. Um, and generally one of the benefits of having a Windows computer over a Mac is uh, generally your Windows computer will break before um, it gets old enough to have this problem. Um, I do want to point out that was a joke, so it's okay to laugh. And I also use almost exclusively Windows computers for work. I have a personal Windows computer, so I'm not bashing them. Uh, definitely Windows is fine. Macs are good too. Um, so the main thing is if your computer has XP, which would be honestly incredibly impressive at this point, uh, you would want a new computer. Same with Windows 7 and same with Windows 8 and 8.1. Currently, Windows 10 and Windows 11 are good to go. So how you find what version of Windows you have, the easiest way for me is to press the Windows key on your keyboard, which is the key to the right of the control key and left of the Alt button. 
which is on the left side of your space bar. If you go here, you can then go to the gear icon, which is settings. You can go to system and you can go to about. Um, this will tell you a couple of things. It will tell you um, if your computer based, if you can't get security updates, it will tell you here. It will also tell you about your operating system um, and you know how, what the internals of your computer are. But if you look down here, Windows specifications, it'll tell you the edition and the version. So right now I'm on Windows 10, slightly out of date, uh, but I saw no reason to update to Windows 11 at this time. So I have Windows 10. So that is how you check what version of Windows you have. Um, I always like to point this out, but you know, computer life expectancy, how long should you plan on your computer working for? And the main questions are what I had talked about previously, which is, can your computer get updates? We'll go over how to check if your computer is getting updates in a minute. Um, how good was your computer brand new? So for example, if your computer um, was on the cheaper side, then it's not gonna last as long as a computer that was on the more expensive side. Uh, but in general, rule of thumb, for a desktop uh, computer, you're looking at a good four to 10 years of it working fine. And for a laptop, you're looking at about three to seven years. The reason why there's this difference is on a desktop computer, things can be made bigger, uh, more solid, and it's not really worried about space or weight. Whereas on a laptop, they have to do everything they can to make these components smaller, which occasionally will make them a little bit less reliable or in general, less powerful. Because if you, you can just think of like a car engine, you know, if you have space in the front under the hood for a V8, it's probably gonna be a little bit more powerful than a smaller uh, V4 engine. So how to do system updates, how to use the search bar, how to navigate folders, and how to connect to the internet. Um, we are actually going to be skipping on the folder section of this, uh, just because we have a class dedicated to folder structures, uh, which is called files and folders, if you're on the mailing list, or you can sign up through Mary uh, for that class in the future. So how to do system updates. Again. I want everyone to get used to pressing that Windows key on your keyboard. Um, at this point in time, you don't honestly need to know where things are located anymore. When it comes to your Windows operating system, you can kind of press the Windows key and start typing. So I'll give you an example. I press the Windows key on the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. You can see the Windows icon and the bar, and you can see that there is a search bar right here. So if I just type in Windows Update, or if I just type in update, you can see that the top result is check for updates. So I don't even need to know how to navigate to find Windows updates. I can just click the Windows key, start typing update, and it will take me directly to where I need to go. Um, generally, your computer will automatically check for Windows updates. Um, if it's a larger update, it will kind of, uh, leave it here on this screen, and then it will nag you consistently to update your computer whenever you turn it on. So what you do is if you want to double check, you can go right here where it says check for updates, click on it. Windows will then connect to the internet and it will check to see if your version of Windows has an update. As you can see, Windows says you're up to date. Last checked today at 1.09 PM. So that was just now. So I feel fairly secure that I don't need an update. Um, right below it, you can see feature update to Windows 10. Uh, feature updates are generally things like they'll add a new feature or they'll fix a feature um, and they'll generally add a you know some security improvements. So I did leave this here uh, so that you could see what it looked like. Uh, but right after this class, I will just hit download and install. Um, and then Windows will download the update. It will then reboot the computer and it will install the update. 
Are there any questions on Windows Update or anything we've gone over so far? How can I get connected to the internet? Oh, uh, I'm going to help her get connected to the internet right now. But so, Tim, um, why don't you, Windows just automatically does their checks for updates, correct? Or do you have to go in and specifically do the check for updates? If you have done nothing to your computer, Windows will automatically check for updates. Great. Thank you. All right. So um, and so yes, you will occasionally see in the news, it happens about once, maybe twice a year, that uh, a Windows update will break something. So one of the things I will occasionally recommend mm -hmm. is on the updates that don't automatically get installed. Uh, those are the ones that will require a restart of your computer. Uh, I would always, not always, but I would recommend if you're at all worried about your computer dying, which is called bricking, uh, that you would wait one or two days before you install the update. Um, what waiting allows you to do is it allows Windows to push out the update. Everyone who gets it first day, if their computers have issues, it gets reported to Microsoft. Microsoft will then fix the update so it doesn't happen to other people. So it is occasionally useful to wait one or two days before updating your computer. Now, if you're more security conscious, of course, uh, do the updates as soon as possible, but be aware that fairly rarely, but it can, an update can cause an issue with your computer. All right, uh, difference between Windows 10 and 11. So, the, difference the main difference between Windows 10 and 11 are um, kind of more backend changes. Uh, it is ostensibly uh, better for people who play video games uh, because of new rendering stuff, uh, new architecture for that. Um, but in general, they're incredibly similar. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I have Windows 10 and I haven't updated this computer to Windows 11. Stuff is generally in the same place, um, but one of the things it does is it allows Windows to kind of show that it's progressing, and it also will generally have some things like security improvements or other compatibility, um, compatibility things to make it just more compatible with newer peripherals and things of that nature. Um, in the future, though, uh, one of the differences between Windows 10 and Windows 11 is Windows 11 will be getting updates longer than Windows 10 because it's newer. Uh, if you have in this Windows update section, if you have a little option to update to Windows 11 and you want your computer to last as long as possible, you can hit it. Uh, but realistically, Windows 10, I think, uh, I think is being supported until 2027, uh, which for me is more than enough time for this computer to die and me to get a new one. So I'm not really concerned with uh, updating to Windows 11 at this point. All right, uh, the next thing, how to use the search bar. So we've slightly gone over this, but again, the Windows search bar will occur, will happen, whenever you press the Windows key, and it will be in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. The best thing about the Windows search bar is you just start typing, and it will generally get you to where you need to go. If you need to connect to wireless, wireless display, Wi-Fi settings, I care about Wi-Fi settings. I just searched for wireless, and I found this. Now I can click on it, and I can go into it automatically takes me where I need to go to connect to a wireless network. Um, if I, once again, if I need updates, Windows Update, I just type in update and it takes me to Windows Update. So it's, it's easier for me to press the Windows key, start typing what I want and Windows to find it than it is for me to remember how to navigate to that place in Windows system preferences.
um, how to connect to the internet. Again, Windows key. If I just type in wireless, I go to Wi-Fi settings. Um, if you're on a laptop, uh, generally you'll be connecting via wireless. Um, in my mind, wireless is always built into Windows laptops. If you're on a desktop, uh, maybe you will be using an ethernet connection and that's using a ethernet cable that is plugged directly into your computer. If you have the ability to plug directly in using an ethernet cable, it will be better, it will be a better experience for you than using Wi-Fi. It's more reliable, it's faster, and visually it's just easier to see, am I plugged in to the internet versus let me check my Wi-Fi. If I wanna see if I'm connected via ethernet, I can, once again, either type in ethernet or go to Wi-Fi and I can find it from here. On the left-hand side, I can see status, Wi-Fi, ethernet. Well, I wanna see if I'm connected via ethernet. I click on that and it will say not connected because I do not have ethernet connected to my computer at this moment because I'm using Wi-Fi. Um, if you need to connect to Wi-Fi, what you will do is you will either go to here, so you can get here by typing in Wi-Fi or wireless, um, and then you will go to show available networks. It will show you what networks your computer sees, and then you can connect to one of them, or you can go down here in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. There's a little wireless icon. I know it may be hard to see, um, but little wireless icon. So that's the single point with the radiating kind of uh, quarter circles. And it will tell me, okay, this is the network I'm connected to. And here are all of the networks that my computer can see. And then you just connect to the correct one. In case you're wondering, uh, if you ever are at the Peterborough Town Library, the name of the wireless there is, what is it, Mary? Uh, public top public and the password is yes all lowercase one two three it's very very secure net um password yes it's top one. amazingly secure top public oh. yep top hyphen public yeah. um yeah and if you have any issues while you're in the library uh, i would definitely just look into the air and yell Mary's name three times, and then she'll appear to help you with your wireless issue. Thank you, Tim. I will, I will for the, yes, thank you. That's all. I'm no doing. problem. I'm here for you. All right. So connect to the internet. Um, once you are connected to the internet, uh, you'll generally use a web browser in order to navigate online. Um, Internet Explorer, uh, do not use it, even if you're able to. Uh, newer computers will not have Windows Explorer even installed as an option. Uh, so the three main options you'll have are Edge, which is Microsoft's browser, Chrome, which is Google's browser, and Firefox, which is the Firefox Foundation's browser. Um, obviously, the Firefox Foundation was really good at naming things. Um, if you have any issues with a website online, uh, one of the recommended things, um, one of the things I recommend is to try using Chrome. Uh, Chrome has a massive market share of the browsers. I think last time I checked, it was like 79%. So if anyone is building a website, uh, they always make sure it works with Chrome because that's the largest number of devices. So they, you know, if you're having issues with Firefox or Edge, uh, check in Chrome and it may work. I'm not saying use Chrome, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles for that example. And if you have any questions about internet browsers, um, just remember it and we'll, we'll go over it at the end where I can show you how to download them, install them, use them, uh, whatever you desire. How to check email. Um, if you want this, uh, we can go over it in a little bit. Uh, generally though, I would recommend checking your email using your web browser like um, 
if you have a Gmail account, you would go to gmail.com, log into it, and then use your check your mail from there. Um, I have seen people have some level of issues with the more computer-based uh, email applications, um, such as Thunderbird or even Windows Mail. Um, it's just generally easier to, if you're online at the time, just go directly to your email's web page and check it. Uh, I see, how do I install a new browser? Um, I will definitely show you how to after the uh, presentation. All right, so next thing, um, we have a class specifically dedicated to being protected while you're online. Uh, obviously that is, you know, easily five hours of me able to talk about it. So we're gonna do a quick five minute version here so everyone can stay awake. Um, Windows protection when online, you do not have to pay money to be protected online. Uh, if you pay for something like Norton or Sophos or McAfee, um, or you may get it free for some reason, um, the reason you're paying is kind of the more user-friendly interface. Uh, they'll say that they are better than the competition. Um, you can go to AV comparatives, or I can show you that. They're all you know, in the same weight class in terms of being good at what they do. Uh, Windows Defender is built right in uh, and works perfectly fine. It's what I personally use on this computer that I'm doing this presentation on, and it will once again automatically update in the background. Uh, so there are there's one distinction I'd like to make. Uh, there are antivirus programs and anti-malware programs. I don't know if this is the official definition, but I classify things into one of these two categories. Antivirus programs will generally stop, are more concerned with stopping things from getting on your computer. And for example, that would be something like Windows Defender, AVG, Norton, Sophos, McAfee, Webroot. The other hand, on the other side are programs like Malwarebytes. So what Malwarebytes does and what it's really good at is finding something that's on your computer that's bad and getting rid of it. So you want something like Windows Defender to stop things from getting on your computer. And then if something's on your computer, generally Windows Defender or antivirus programs can deal with it. But Malwarebytes is oftentimes, in my opinion, uh, slightly better at it. So you would just download Malwarebytes, install it, run it, see if it finds anything, and uh, let it clean up your computer that way. The next thing I like to recommend is uBlock Origin. Um, if you've ever been kind of online and there's a ad that keeps popping up or there's you search for something and a, another window pops up in front of what you just searched for, uh, uBlock Origin will stop that. Uh, so those are ad blockers. So those are things like Hitman Pro, uBlock Origin, and there was one recommendation from the last time we ran this class, which was Panda Protection. I've never used it. I stick with uBlock Origin, but these will basically make your web browsing experience a little bit better. All right, cleaning your Windows computer. So sometimes you may find your Windows computer being a little bit slow. One of the things you can do is clean it. Uh, please don't, you know, we're not talking about a fire hose here. Um, we're talking about running a program on your computer in order to clean it. So the one size fits all Windows cleaning utility is built right in. I know, good job, Microsoft. Um, so how do we get there? Once again, we hit the Windows key and we go to search. And because Windows is very nice, we just type clean. And we will see disk cleanup. Uh, yes, I know this is very tiny. Um, Windows Disk Cleanup will ask me to select a drive. These are one of the hard drives in my computer. Hard drives are the things that all of your files and programs are stored on. Um, I have a couple of drives. Most people will just have one, so you hit OK. Uh, disk Cleanup will then run. It will then say if you 
use disk cleanup, it will free X amount of space. Um, and there will be a little option for, uh, it'll show you, you know, what things you can get rid of. What I recommend is on the bottom left of this window, there is an option for clean up system files. I'm going to click on it. Uh, this will take a little bit longer, but basically Windows system files are things like the old versions of Windows, old Windows updates, and you probably couldn't have seen it, but the first time I ran this, it was going to clean up 1.6 gigs or something. This time it found 11.3 gigs of files and folders. So you would go here, run disk cleanup, hit OK. It would then clean up all of these files that Windows doesn't think are useful for your computer anymore. Um, and one thing that we'll do is that we'll clean up temp files, Windows update files, kind of files that you don't know that you want to clean up, and it will do it automatically for you. Uh, one other thing is um, if you've, in the old parlance, you would defrag your hard drive. Um, if you have a solid state drive, uh, you do not need to defrag it anymore. If you actually try and defrag a solid state drive, it will um, it will make it die sooner than it should. So you don't need to defrag anymore. I just put this in there because it used to be a very um, common thing for people to do. So I just wanted to get that out there. Don't need to defrag anymore. Um, empty trash. Whenever you delete anything from your computer, it will go to the trash. And from there, you can then actually delete it. So that's just to say if you are running low on space. So if we press the Windows key and go to storage, once again, I don't know how to get here. I just typed in storage and I got here. You can see how much space is free and how much space is used on your hard drive for your computer. If you have um, too much stuff on your computer and you're running low on storage space and you're trying to free up that storage space by deleting things, you won't actually delete anything until you empty the trash. So just reminding people that you have to empty the trash after you delete things in order for it to actually be removed. As a general rule of thumb, you want at least 20% of your storage space free. So once you get to 20, 15, or 10% uh, left of your storage space, you should start cleaning it up. And this is because your computer will get slower the more full it is because it has less space to do computer swap things um, in order to make sure all of your files are easily accessible. The next thing is task manager. And uh, by now, I'm sure everyone could explain to me how we're gonna get to task manager. So Mary, if you could tell me how I'm gonna get to task manager, that would be great. All right, you're gonna hit the Windows button. My goodness. And you're going to type it in, which we can't see because my toolbar is breaking, is covering it, but that's all right. All right. So I did exactly what Mary said. Uh, she can run this class. And I just hit the Windows key, went to the search bar, typed in Task Manager, and here is Task Manager. So if your computer is slow or something or a, or a program is non-responsive, you can go to Task Manager. What Task Manager will allow you to do is you can see how much of your computer is being used, where its speed is going. Um, if, you're, if a program is unresponsive, it would then show up and it will say not responding on the left-hand side. It will also have different colors. So generally, the darker the color, so the more orange it is, um, is bad. So if a computer, if a program is using up too much um, of your computer's processing power and you want to retrieve that, you can right click on anything. Let's click on something that we're not showing. So you can right click on something on the left-hand side 
and you can say end task. This will kind of do that monopoly, uh, do not pass go, do not get $200 kind of thing. It will just kill it. Um, so even if it's non-responsive, this will just uh, turn it off for lack of a better term. And your computer will then get all that space freed back up. Uh, the next thing is startup items. So if you install anything on your computer, uh, oftentimes you'll see that the next time you start your computer, that program will automatically show up. It will automatically turn on. It will automatically be taking up your system resources. So what you can do is you can go to Task Manager. You can go to Startup, which is a tab in the top. And it will show you all of the things that your computer automatically starts with. So some things are important. For example, this LCOM thing is my mouse. I want that to start with my computer. Uh, Microsoft SharePoint, I don't really want this to start with my computer. I don't think I use it all the time. Disable. Now it will not start when my computer restarts. Microsoft Teams, it's disabled. Um, so you can kind of go here. If, so things like Adobe will automatically try and start up. And you don't necessarily need something like uh, Adobe Acrobat, which is a PDF viewing application. You don't necessarily need that all the time. So you don't need to start your computer with it. So you can just go in here and turn things off and disable them from startup. If you disable something from startup, it does not mean you are uninstalling it. It just means you're telling the program, when I want to use you, I will open the program up. Uh, another thing that we have a full class on, but just a quick five minute rundown, is backing up data. If you have ever had your computer for some reason fall off your desk because your dog trips on the power cord and brings it crashing down to its fateful demise, you will understand that it sucks. One of the ways you can make it suck less is by having a backup of your computer's data. Admittedly, uh, Apple does this better, but Windows, it's still perfectly serviceable. What you would do is you would get a external hard drive, such as one from Western Digital or Seagate, uh, plug it in and you would run their backup program. And what that will do is it will say, what do you want us to back up? Generally, I recommend things like your documents and your photos because photos I think are kind of important. Uh, then when this device, this external drive is plugged into your computer, it will automatically back those things up. You can also use cloud uh, options to back up your data. But one thing to note is if you're trying to back up your data with cloud applications, such as Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox, you will oftentimes have to pay for them, pay their monthly fee, because if you're backing up data, it's generally more data than their free versions will allow. In case you're wondering about cost, uh, external drives are fairly cheap. You'll be looking at anywhere from $50 to $100 uh, for enough storage to back up your entire computer. So uh, these are Windows, my computer won't fill in the sentence. Uh, my computer won't turn on. Um, one thing that is hilarious to me, and I'm not making fun of anyone because I've personally done it more times than I care to admit, is make sure the power strip that your computer is connected to <laughs> is on. You know how there's that little switch for you know, if there's too much electricity, the switch will flip, the little lighted red switch, and then that power strip will produce no power so your computer won't get damaged. Yeah, just make sure your foot hasn't hit that. First thing for computer not turning on. Um, if your computer will like make noise, but you won't see anything, 
then it might be a display issue. Um, so to fix that, you can you know either take it somewhere and have them look at it. You can come by on Wednesday and I can look at it, or you can try plugging in a different display to it. Now, oftentimes, whenever you try and start a computer, something on the computer will light up. If nothing lights up and you hear no sound, uh, your computer might be dead. Um, so it might have been bricked in some way. Then you would have to try and take it somewhere to get it repaired. Uh, if your computer won't connect to the internet, uh, the first thing to always do if you're having an issue with a Windows computer is restart it. I don't really have a good analogy but just restarting your computer will make it start from zero. And oftentimes that will fix a problem that you're currently having. Uh, after that, make sure you go to, you know, Wi-Fi. If you're connected via Wi-Fi and make sure your Wi-Fi is turned on. If your Wi-Fi is turned off, then your Wi-Fi is not gonna work. If you have an ethernet cable plugged in, go to the ethernet option and make sure that your Windows computer sees that there's an ethernet cable connected. If your computer won't make sound, oftentimes it's just as simple as going down here to the lower right-hand side, clicking on the speaker icon and making sure that your speakers are turned on. You can accidentally hit the mute button uh, on keyboards or on your laptop, there will be a mute button that you may accidentally press. The next thing to check is make sure that it's going to the right speakers. Uh, so if I click this little up arrow, I can see that I have a lot of options for my sound to come out of. It might be that I have uh, my playback device set incorrectly. Uh, my computer won't stop a program. Easiest way to do that, once again, press the Windows key, start typing in Task Manager. Task Manager, find the offending program, right-click on it, and hit End Task, and it will stop that program from currently running. My computer won't open a program. Uh, again, the first thing you do restart the computer, try and open the program again. If that doesn't work, try installing the program again. These are more of those, you know, what if scenarios. Um, the one I'll talk about is, uh, is stuck. If your computer is just not responsive, once again, restart it. If your computer can't restart, what you can generally do is hold in the power button on your computer from anywhere from three to five seconds, and your computer will automatically shut down, and then you can turn it back on. Uh, doing this will cause you to lose any data on your computer that you have not saved, though. So just be careful about that. And the last one is if your computer keeps yelling about calling Microsoft support whenever you're browsing online, uh, don't call that number. Um, instead, install something like uBlock Origin, um, which will try to prevent those pop-ups. Um, Microsoft, just as a general rule, Microsoft is not that nice. It won't give you a number to directly call to troubleshoot your issue over the phone. Uh, you have to go through hoops in order to get that kind of support. So if you see a web page pop-up saying, your computer is infected, call this number now. Uh, don't call that number. Yeah. All right, so um, um, while everyone formulates all of their questions, which I'm sure Mary will at least come up with three, um, how do I install a new browser? Well, first of all, you want to kind of figure out what browser you want. So we'll just go with the basic one, Google Chrome. If I go to the top of Brave, which is the browser I'm currently using, and click the plus for new tab, I can just type in Chrome. I will search for Google Chrome. I will then see this result, google.com Chrome, 
Google Chrome, download the fast, secure browser from blah, 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 probably Google. I will click on that. I will then hit download Chrome. It will automatically find what version of Windows you're using and get the correct installer. Download Chrome. It will then ask me where I want to save Chrome, save. And then the nice thing is generally, if you haven't done anything, these will automatically be saved to your downloads folder, but we don't care where it's saved. All we do is we go to the bottom here, we click this little arrow and we go show in folder. And this will take us directly to where Chrome now, the Chrome installer now resides. We would then double click on it, which would then, I don't know if you can see this since it popped up, but it will ask us if we want to install Chrome. Um, I'm going to say no, uh, just because I already have Chrome installed, but you would essentially just hit yes through that process. Um, yeah, so that's basically how you install Chrome. So Tim, uh, when you were downloading, you unmarked, unchecked the help Chrome um, with there any issues. Why did you do that? Was that for security? Yeah, uh, I just don't like uh, even anonymized data uh, being reported from my computer. So I'm selfish in that way. Suddenly Firefox won't open websites, but Microsoft Edge does. Um, so I am unfortunately not gonna open up my Firefox uh, because that's what I do all my personal stuff on. Um, but uh, what the first thing I would do is I would go to all the browser extensions that may or may not be installed in Firefox. Uh, it will be in a similar location to this. If you click on the options in the top right hand corner and you go to something that either set, I believe Firefox is extensions, but you would go to extensions and make sure that you don't have any extension there that doesn't make sense. Um, if you have no extensions there and after a computer reboot, you still can't open Firefox uh, or you still can't open websites using Firefox, I would uninstall Firefox and reinstall it. So how do we uninstall a program? Well, if you're on a Mac, uh, you find the program and you drag it to the trash. On Windows, it's a little bit more difficult. So uh, once again, if we're looking for how to do something on our Windows computer, the first thing we do is press the Windows key. And then we just, I want to uninstall a program. So I'll just type in uninstall. Okay, add or remove programs. That sounds like something that is exactly what I'm looking for. Click apps and features. I would then search this list. So I would search this list for Firefox. I would then click on Firefox and hit uninstall. It would then uninstall Firefox. After Firefox is uninstalled, I would then go to my trusty web browser, search for Firefox, download Firefox for desktop from Mozilla, click, download Firefox, and once again, it will ask me where to save it. I hit save. It will then show up down in the bottom left-hand corner. Click show in folder. And now I would just double click it to install. I think there was something I said I would talk about but it is escaping me. While you're thinking about that, we have a question in the room. Yes. So um, when looking at computers and the specs, uh, it talks about RAM and it may give like, um, it may say this computer has eight gigabytes of RAM and this one has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then there's sometimes it says, well, this is an eight gigabytes of RAM, but it is upgradable to 12. How does that work? How do you upgrade? 
the RAM? And what might be an example of why you might upgrade the RAM in your computer? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. So um, the analogy I use for RAM is a highway. Uh, your computer is how fast the cars are going on the highway. And RAM is the amount of lanes your computer has. So the more RAM you have, the more cars can be on the road carrying data. So the reason why you would want more RAM is just you have more room for data to be existing on your computer. So uh, the natural question is how much RAM should your computer have? Uh, the current baseline for how much RAM your computer should have is eight gigabytes. Uh, you want at least eight gigabytes of RAM in a computer if you were to buy one today. Uh, just for an example, if I go to my computer uh, right here, I have 32 gigs of RAM. As you can see, I am probably using more RAM right now than some people have in their entire computer. And that's because the amount of RAM you have will be filled up by programs. So if you want to have a whole bunch of programs open at one time, then you would want more RAM in order to facilitate that. Um, if you're looking for kind of a computer, like a laptop that you wanna have you know, your web browser open and maybe working on a Word document as well, eight gigabytes is perfectly fine and it will last you for years. If you want an upgrade to that, 16 gigabytes is kind of a, a safe number for, uh, for RAM. If you're doing something like photo editing or video editing, then you would want something like 32 gigabytes of RAM. When something says that it's upgradable, that means that a RAM DIM slot is open. It's not gonna be incredibly apparent on this picture, but if you see uh, kind of where my cursor is, uh, these two like vertical purple bars, that's RAM. So if your computer has the ability to upgrade RAM, that means that maybe you only have one bar currently in it and you can choose to buy and add a second bar. Um, on a laptop, uh, it's slightly less space, so it's harder to do. But if you need any help with it, you can definitely bring it in on Wednesday at 12 and I could help you, one, find the correct RAM for your computer and um, show you how to install it. So more RAM is better, but eight gigabytes perfectly fine for 90% of people. And we have a question here at Ripley. Can you repeat that? We're having trouble hearing you. Oh, sure. So yeah, not, not you, Tim, the question. Oh. Sorry. The question is you talked about emptying the trash. On my laptop, it says it automatically does it every 30 days. What's the big difference, or can you trust every 30 days? Yeah, so uh, your Windows computer, if you've made no changes to it, and every single cloud service that I know of, anything that's in the trash will be removed after 30 days. Um, the reason why I say you should empty the trash is because if you are trying to delete things in order to free up space, it makes sense to me to just immediately remove those things as opposed to waiting 30 days for that stuff to be free up. So if you want to empty your trash, uh, that would be the recycle bin on your desktop. All you would do is you would right click on your recycle bin and you would hit empty recycle bin. And then it will ask you if you want to delete those items, you would hit yes because they're in the trash. So hopefully you want them to be there. And then it would delete the items that were in your trash and free up that space. Uh, one thing I do wanna point out is if you accidentally delete something that's in your trash and you want to recover it, 
uh, it is a fairly simple process to do that uh, if you try and recover it quickly. So if you delete something and you didn't mean to, um, don't panic. Uh, you can recover it if you realize what you did soon enough. Also, if you're trying to delete things because the federal government is on to you, uh, just putting it in the trash and deleting it is not enough. Uh, they will find that information. And if you want tips on that, uh, come Wednesday. So do we have any questions from our Zoom participants? Anything in, in the classroom? Yeah, I, I keep sometimes on my screen when I when I go back in, this this tropical ad thing is called La Ditch comes up, L-A-D-I-G-U-E. Is there any way to permanently get rid of that? So uh, is this something that happens like when you have a web browser open? Probably yes. So um, and I'll show you guys how to get to it. So absolute favorite thing. Uh, I briefly mentioned it, but I feel like I should do an entire class on it just because of how much I love it, is uh, uBlock Origin. Uh, what uBlock Origin does is it will stop unexpected pop-ups. Um, also, a side benefit is if you ever want to watch YouTube, it will automatically get rid of the ads. So anyway, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, how we get to uBlock Origin is a couple of different ways. One, uh, we can just search for uBlock Origin with our web browser. It will then take us to where we can install uBlock Origin. Uh, if you're on Firefox, you can use uBlock Origin. If you're on Chrome, you can use uBlock Origin. Uh, Microsoft Edge is based on Chrome, so you can use uBlock Origin. Uh, I can't think of an incredibly solid reason not to use uBlock Origin. My wife sometimes yells at me for how much I talk about uBlock Origin. Anyway, we would click on chrome.google.com uBlock Origin. This is the Chrome Web Store. Uh, as you can see, I already have uBlock Origin installed. If I did not have uBlock Origin installed, this option, which says remove from Brave, would say install. I would then hit the button, go through the prompts. It's just hitting next twice, and uBlock Origin would then be installed on my computer. One of the things that it's great for is blocking ads. The other thing that's really nice about it is if we go to a site like the New York Times, the doop. Um, it will kind of, I don't know what New York Times looks like normally, but I imagine there are ads. So what we can do is if we go to extensions and pin uBlock, you can kind of see it. It's this red shield on the top right-hand corner. If I click, it will give me a little bit more information about the page I'm viewing. So there is this blue icon that looks like a power button. This tells me that uBlock Origin is turned on for this site. If you have uBlock Origin installed and you go to a website and you are having issues with that website, all you would do is you would go to uBlock Origin and then click on this icon and it would turn uBlock Origin off so it wasn't blocking things. The reason why it's kind of nice is right now I can see that on this page alone, it has blocked nine ads or tracking cookies. I don't know which, but it's blocking things I don't want. So it's blocked nine of them on this page. If you go to CNN and start clicking around, you'll see that number go up into the low hundreds. And I can see the amount of things it's blocked. So it has blocked theoretically, over 18,000 ads or trackers, tracking cookies um, that would monitor my presence online and that would be showing me ads or pop-ups. So answer to the question, if stuff's happening and is popping up that you don't want, 
uh, I would install uBlock Origin on your browser. The second thing is in case it's not um, being caused by your browser is Malwarebytes. If I just type in Malwarebytes, I can go to malwarebytes.com and it would allow me to do a free download. Uh, Malwarebytes is free, um, or there is a free version. Uh, one of the negative things with the free version, it will constantly remind you that you are not paying for Malwarebytes and it will ask you to give them money all the time, like all the time. Um, so some people find that really annoying. Um, I do too, but I deal with it. So Malwarebytes, free download. You would just click on this, download Malwarebytes. You would then install it. It would then show up on your computer. I probably haven't updated it in a bit, so it'll take a while. Um, but once you have Malwarebytes on your computer, you would then hit the scan button right here the blue button and it would then it would then scan uh, your computer for things like uh, you know malicious software just annoying ad software on your computer and then it would remove them okay. and yep Go ahead. oh I was just saying this process can take a while so just, if you run it, be comfortable. Right. Um, can you just explain to all of us what extensions are and what kinds of um, possibilities we can have with extensions that we add on to our browsers? Yeah. So extensions are items that allow your web browser to increase its functionality. So, for example, if you want an ad blocker, to block ads while you're browsing the internet, you would install the extension for uBlock Origin. So if we go to Chrome extensions, I may have spelled extensions, right? And I click on this in the Chrome Web Store, I can see a list of tons of extensions. So if I want an extension specifically for a program I use, I can search it. So for example, I use Bitwarden. Bitwarden. I will search for it and I see that there is an extension for Bitwarden, a secure and free password manager for all of your devices. If I use Dropbox, I can search. And I don't really see a very good Dropbox extension. Interesting. I can search for Google Drive. I see that there is a Google Drive extension. If you're old school uh, and you use Evernote, I can search and see that there is an Evernote Web Clipper extension. Um, the other thing you can do is you can go to home and you can kind of on the left hand side, click on a category. So if I want an extension that will tell me the news and weather, I can click on news and weather. And now I see a whole bunch of extensions that may be interesting to me. Like this one will show me the current moon phase that will impact my life immeasurably. So I click on that. I look at it, I see that it has four out of five with 26 ratings, a low number of users, eh, but I really want it. I can look at the reviews for it. I don't know what that means. Um, and then I could hit add to Chrome and install it. Can you show them where the, these extensions live once you've installed it? Yep. Uh, once you have installed it, um, you would go to extensions. So in your web browser, you would go to the top right hand corner, right below the X, hit the ribbon, find where it says extensions, click on it. 
and then a page will pop up which shows you all of the extensions you have installed. Uh, you can see I have the Bitwarden extension, the Honey extension, and the uBlock Origin extension. I can also see because of this toggle, the orange toggle, that all of these extensions are turned on. If I want to disable an extension but not remove it, I can hit the toggle and the extension will be turned off. And then hit the toggle, it's now turned on. Um, if you're wondering what an extension is doing, you can click on details and then it will show you the description. It will show you the permissions that you're giving the extension, all of that fun, all of those fun things. That's great. Thank you, Tim. And as we can see, Malwarebytes has found a threat on my computer. So if we go to it, we can see, oh, Bitcoin stuff. That's fine. Close. Close. Normally, you could hit um, the other option, and it would remove those from your system. So you have provided a lot of information. Do we have any questions before we wrap up? Anybody online have any questions for Tim? Yes, I have one. Uh, when you do a disk cleanup, does that take care of that are on your machine? Um, it will take care of some of those type of items in Edge specifically, but it won't do it for any other browser. And how would you do that? Um, you would go to the top right, uh, go to let's see more tools, uh, more tools, clear browsing data. Uh, it would then ask you, you know, what's the time range that you want to clear? You can kind of just do last hour, 24 hours, or all time. It would then ask, do you want to clear the browsing history, cookies, and cached images? If you hit the clear data option, it would then clear that data. If you want more options, you can go to advanced, uh, and it would it allows me to kind of like narrow in. You know, you can just delete all the passwords or all the autofill forms you have. Um, if you wanna be even more secure, you can go to the on exit options, which basically mean anytime you close the browser, it will clear these items. So if you have like a family computer or a computer where multiple people log in and you don't want any of that data saved for the next person, you can on exit clear all the browsing history, all the cookies, you know, all the autofill data. And that way the next person who logs in uh, doesn't have access to your, for example, if you saved your Amazon password or something like that, it would automatically clear that information out. Great, thank you. We have a question in the classroom. Uh, well, my question was similar to that. I was concerned, like, if uh, my laptop was lost, is there a way to be able to wipe out data or uh, make it more secure besides the password? Um, more secure besides the password. Uh, if you realistically, um, the way to do that would be to encrypt, would be to encrypt your computer which essentially adds another password to it. Um, so in the olden days, or if your password, or if your computer isn't encrypted, um, I could, for example, take your computer, see that I needed a password to access it, say, I want the data anyway, remove your hard drive from your computer, plug that into my computer and just read it normally. So the way to be more secure is to encrypt your computer. The negative aspects with encrypting your computer is if you forever, if you for any reason forget that password, uh, you are up a creek without a paddle. It that that computer is like dead to you if you if you lose that password. And is that something you could even do with a cell phone or a tablet? Uh, most cell phones are automatically encrypted. Okay. 
Yep. So if you have like an iPhone or a higher end Android phone, um, those are automatically encrypted. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Tim. This has been a lot of a lot of wonderful information. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. And remember, if you have any questions afterwards, email Mary or drop by on Wednesday, either remote or in person. And you can get the Zoom link for drop-in if you just go to our events page and hit the title for tech drop-in. It will show you the Zoom link so you can do it that way. Or what are the hours for drop-in? It starts at 12. And it's 12 to 1, although Tim will stay later if, if there are people who um, need, you know, there are a lot of people waiting for him. So.